Take it away. So a motion to open the uh, select board meeting. I will second that and make a motion though. No, I guess I make a motion. I'm here. You're gonna second? We'll second. All right, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness, we're all set. Okay. Hey, Lily, would you do the honor of reading? I can't. Oh, you can't, okay, I'll read it then. for the presentation, sorry. <laughs> okay, my favorite part, okay. Meetings normally held in municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access. Could you guys put, put your thing on mute, please? And where required, public participation provided. In accordance with the governor's, Governor Baker's 26, gee, June 16th, 2021, Act building, I sorry, I can't read, it's a little dark in here. Extension, <laughs> extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions in this March 20th, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the op open meeting law, GL 30A20, remote meeting connection noted below. Okay, great, because I need a little larger font. All right, um, I'm just going to take a roll call of our members. So I'm going to start off with Judy Chalfont. Here. Julie. Thank you. Lily. Here. Present. Tim, Tim Hilchey. Here. Okay. Kate Lawless. Here. Andrea Liebson. Not yet. Okay, here. I'm here. Trevor, McDaniel, here, you're here. Here. Uh, Darius, I don't think Darius is coming. Um, Carolyn? Yes. You're here. Uh, John Pajuric? Yes. Here. Jennifer Remillard? She's here. I see oh, her. She's here. Okay. Um, M.A.? Here. You're here. And Dave Wolfram? He's connecting right oh, now. He's connecting. Okay, so he's here. Anna Lee. Here. Here. And Satu. I'm here, Denise. Sorry. No, that's great. Okay. Hi. That's great, Jennifer. Thanks. And Satu, you're here? No, not here yet. All right. All right. And I just want to has anyone had a chance to, or has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from our last meeting? I will make a motion to um, uh, approve the minutes as presented. Okay. I will second that motion. All right. Anybody opposed? No. Okay. I guess minutes are all set. And let's see. We do have committee reports, but Tim? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to suspend um, committee reports for this evening in the interest of the public presentation. John, I'll second it. All right. Anybody opposed? No. All right. Thanks, Tim. I guess we'll just move right on to the presentation. So that's pretty efficient. Before we do that, Denise, I'm going to ask everybody to mute themselves, um, except for Denise, obviously, um, Anna Lee, Carolyn, or, or I will come and mute you. So, <laughs> uh, I think you can set it so that people mute automatically when they join the meeting. That might be a good Yeah, setting. and it, it is supposed to actually be set up like that. I think it's somebody who borrowed my account undid it. So, um, but if everybody would just mute themselves right now, and everybody is being really good right now, and I am going to mute myself, but share my screen. Okay. What's that, Lily? Okay, but you've got two things up on your screen. Oh, am I sharing the wrong screen? Yep. Mea culpa, sorry. You guys are probably looking at a presentation I did earlier today. <laughs> Look at my stop share, sorry about that. I could see it. But... Wait, not all of it. There we go, this is the one I wanna share the I'm screen. Right there, I'm gonna sit next to you, that's fine too. Oh, I see everybody's stuff here. Prezi next CCI public meeting. And All right. Are you That's seeing that screen. now? Okay. Yes. 
Um, let me get, it's not, I do apologize you all. No problem. Is that filling your screen, everybody? Can you see it? All right, good. That's it what is. Matt. It is, good. I will go back to muting. Okay, great. Okay, so we're gonna move on now to the information uh, sharing presentation. So after, after the presentations, I'm gonna open it up for questions and comments from participants, all right? So to begin with, Deerfield's Connecting Community Initiative, CCI, was formed so we could be more efficient and effective in responding to the needs of our community. More specifically, CCI eliminates the silos of town committees to ensure better communication, collaboration, and innovation among boards, committees, town administration, and community members. CCI unites more than 20 boards to create a unified vision for our community's development. The first realization of this is the South Deerfield campus that links our civic buildings and community services while breathing new life into our architectural treasures. Our vision, a centralized municipal campus as a dynamic gathering place for all town residents. Housing for older adults, safe, affordable, subsidized near civic and business resources. Senior slash community center for all ages, a library with expanded space and programs, town hall in a renovated historic building, town common with attractive footpaths, benches, fountain and plantings, improved parking, bikeways and walkways that support businesses and activities. Our mission, shared energy efficient infrastructure that serves all downtown municipal and commercial buildings, zoning to encourage development in the heart of the community and preserve forests and farms. Structures designed for accessibility, energy efficiency, and anticipated impacts of climate change. Over the course of six meetings, we came to agreement on the value of our various buildings and have a unified vision of what to do with these buildings. The vision begins with the renovation of our former senior center, senior center, I, I guess it was an elementary school too, to convert it into the home of our town offices. The revitalized building connects with new construction to create a senior community center. The center is more accessible and inclusive in response to our changing community and senior needs. I'm gonna turn it over to John now so he can speak about our plans for the municipal center. John? Thanks. Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome uh, to the Co Connected Communities Initiative Group. One of the things we looked for uh, was community support and community input. And the community has told us point blank that they really do not want to see the old elementary school, as we know at the senior center, taken down. They view it as a historical structure and would really like to see it renovated and turned into a useful piece to society as a whole. We worked with an architect from uh, Dietz Inc Incorporated, and uh, they've been amazing to work with. You can see a rendering here looking from Greenfield Savings Bank at the current um, senior center, old elementary school. The right hand side is the current building. In between the buildings that you see there is a glass area. That would be an addition with an elevator to bring up to both sides of the building. With that said, on the left hand side is a possible addition. The initial thought from the group was to put an auditorium over there with a few additional offices and more storage space to assist with the future needs of town hall to make sure that we had space for 50 years. We did not want to walk into a building and be out of space within five to 10 years. We really wanted foresight for the future. As we explored our options, that dynamic kind of changed. We actually took a step back and said, okay, we'd really like to use that space also for a community center, senior center. When we reference a community and senior center, we're referencing one building. Monday through Friday and even into the evenings, it would, the vast majority would be for senior use, but we would also share that as a community use building. So we would maximize our impact from society all the way from infants, all the way through to our senior folks in need of services. So where you see on your left-hand side of the screen, you see a current auditorium. That's the ground level floor. Our thought was we actually take that ground level floor and make that a one floor community senior center. On top of the community senior center, 
we spoke to a couple builders, we spoke to the architects, and we found that the most cost effective way to build would be to put on a second floor because you've already got a foundation and you've already got a roof. So we decided it, it would be possible above the community senior center to put some space on for future storage for possible greater meeting space. I, I don't know if we agree that we would need an auditorium to this scale, but we talked about putting a bigger office on for the town administrator with some private conference rooms and a select board office really to look forward for that 50 year outlook. And again, down below would be the community senior center. So all in one building, we would have the town hall, a community and senior center with a brand new library right next door. And to the left of both of these buildings would still be the police department. The original schoolhouse where the police department is now, most realized was taken down in, in 1996. The police department was built on a slab from ground up. Most people don't realize that the other side of that where the town hall is now is built in the 50s. That's when Conway Street was closed. And that building is uh, not energy compliant whatsoever. The roof cannot take a snow load. So therefore we can't insulate the roof. There's a lot of structural issues with it. There's a lot of mechanical and HVAC, electrical, et cetera, issues with it. And we're really not convinced that it's cost effective to renovate that side. So the vision would actually be the possibility of removing that side of the building and the police department would just stay as a standalone structure over there. But looking at this, you can see the old schoolhouse renovated into a town hall. You can see the addition in between with the elevator shaft. Um, and then on the left-hand side, yet again, would be that community senior center. And above it, we would put additional spacing on for meeting spaces, town administrators, select board offices, and a vast amount of storage because we all recognize the fact, even in our own houses, you never can have enough storage. So I think that's it from me. Thanks, Denise. Great, thanks, John. It was a great presentation. Okay, we're also looking to develop senior housing on the same campus that will be walkable to the Senior Community Center, as well as our expanded library and our town common. The campus will be more energy efficient, hopefully with a geothermal system that serves all of our municipal buildings. And we've been looking into that as well. So we're in the process of applying for the community one-stop grant for the Leary lot and the municipal center. We're also applying for shared streets and spaces grant to construct a sidewalk that links Frontier High School to the park since that's, you know, that's been a huge issue. And we also have community preservation funds that can be used for some of the projects. In closing, we're all working together to support our vision of a vibrant centralized campus. We're balancing big ideas while being mindful of the financial impact on our town. So now I'm going to open it up for questions and comments and remind you to raise your hand to be recognized. Lily will, I think, take care of that. And I'll direct your questions to individuals on the CCI committee. So please speak one at a time, be respectful, be considerate, concise, non-repetitive, only one comment per person and two minutes minutes to speak and I've got a timer. <laughs> so, so the first question, um, Lily, if you can. Hey, uh, nobody has any questions. What? <laughs> Raise your hand, everybody. There must All right, be. Carolyn, you get two minutes, I guess. <laughs> I'm timing you. All right. Well, I, I just want to say we had um, just a, a real quick presentation from Kimberly. Um, uh, from McPhee from the FERCOG on our uh, Bloody Brook situation. And um, as you know, we put in a new open bottom culvert that will be um, mu have much more capacity in the Kelleher Drive area, but there's still a huge amount of problems in Bloody Brook. And so we're hoping to attract all this investment into this campus, but what thing that has come up is um, there is going to be between 20 and $30 million more in 319 money, which is water quality money. Um, uh, so I'm just talking to Kimberly. Um, I had a conservation district meeting yesterday and we're putting together 
a small committee on our conservation district to um, try to look at a 319 grant, what would we could do in the Bloody Brook watershed, which is north of North Main Street for retention and filtration projects potentially. And we would partner, the conservation district would partner with the FERCOG and hopefully um, work through the Conservation Commission in town and try to, um, and the Mosquito District, which I also happen to be a commissioner of um, um, in the next few weeks, hopefully we'll have a plan for the Bloody Brook so that um, we'll have less risk of flooding and more um, able to work with the Bloody Brook in a positive way um, through our campus project. So I thought that was extremely exciting. Thanks, Any other questions? Andrea just came in, by the way. <laughs> I, just, I just let her in. <clears throat> uh, we, Lynn Rose has a question. So it sounds like this is a community center. I mean, you're talking about elderly, what's this like combo? Uh, it's the first time I've really heard anything about it, so I apologize if you know, I'm behind the loop here, but it sounds like it's you're combining with town functions, but also community functions, and it's like the full age range. I mean, it just sounds like a community center slash town office. Is that, do I have it? I just want to make sure I have a handle on what, what you're thinking, and you're trying to figure out how to make it work, and you've gone through different scenarios trying to figure out about the buildings and how to use them and uh, what's feasible to do and cost-effective, correct? Okay, and, you know, I know I did an inspection of the uh, senior center years ago and just was really concerned with lead and asbestos. And I would like to hear, that's what I do for work. I do environmental stuff in buildings and, and there's like legacy, you know, hazardous materials. I would like to hear some of you know, these options, like what does it cost to remediate some of that to, you know, to make it safe? And, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, I think John, you were talking about different, trying different things with different buildings. And the one thing that I didn't hear was what, what are some of those costs? Because sometimes that makes a pro If we take down a building, those costs are really expensive. If we remediate them, take them out and then to rebuild, that's also expensive. So you must have weighed some of that. So I know I just said a bunch of different things. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around what's being proposed, but also understand what went into weighing things out. There was energy efficiency, there's use. I'm sure there's cost of renovation and what's feasible. And if you do a certain percentage of renovation, then you're bringing everything up to code, correct? Yeah. Do you want to respond, John? Sure, yeah. yeah. So. Lynn, as usual, you're spot on. It is a community senior center. Okay, so think about the base floor on the left-hand side is about roughly 10 to 12,000 square feet of a shared use building between the whole community. Primarily during the day, it's the seniors, it's, it's their building. We actually want an area where we can put the community nurse, a uh, social worker, and community outreach coordinator. That way, anybody that's having difficulty in the community, you have the three department heads sitting right across from each other coordinating everything right right there all services are, are done right there which is amazing so the current building that's there the old schoolhouse or the senior center whatever you'd like to refer to it as when we look at the the square footage of it we know that it will meet today's needs for the town hall there's a question about in 10 or 20 years space wise it may outgrow it so that's where we look at saying okay that whole front building is going to be the town hall but it's slightly cost effective to put some of the area above that 10 or 10, uh, that 10 to 12,000 square foot community senior center. Maybe we only put three or 4,000 finished feet up there, but we want some up there for additional space for storage, for meeting space, for maybe a bigger select boards office, a confidential executive session conference room where people can't sit in the hallway and listen to Lisa Mead when she's on speakerphone with the select board. So that's kind of the overall concept. The other thing that really developed this was, oh, Carolyn, stop. So um, the other thing that really uh, put us down this road was the use of the community preservation funds. Because that building is registered with the state, we can tap into the CPA 
if the committee will allow us to, and possibly bond out against the CPA fund to renovate that building. We've got current estimates to renovate that building. I think they're a tad bit low. They came in at roughly 2.6 to 2.8 million. That was to gut it to studs and build it right up. Um, again, I think that's low. I think we're probably closer to four to 5 million in all reality, but the community preservation funds could better be addressed by Tim who chairs that committee. But I think I answered most, if I didn't let me know. Yeah, I mean, when I when I did the inspection, I mean, there was definitely lead paint, there's asbestos, there was mold. You know, I just, um, I mean, we'd have to deal with those costs if we tore it down anyway, because those are environments. So I, I think, you know, when you're saying the estimates are low, it'd be interesting to see if we've done an environmental, you know, assessment, a materials assessment to see what that costs to, to do that. And so there's that thought. And then the other question I had, is there any thought been put to um, like a little bit, not a commercial kitchen, but a kitchen where if people had events, they could warm up food or they could cook or, I mean, I know in the senior center, there was a small kitchen area. So I, I didn't hear anything about that, but that would, and you know, I know in the town office is a small kitchen area, but that seems like a, the, a key piece to any facility. So there'd be two kitchens. Number one, on the third floor of the current senior center, elementary school, there would be a small kitchen for the town hall staff to use, along with a, a little area they could use to meet in. Um, in the brand new community senior center, there'd be a much larger commercial kitchen, along with an eating space to make sure that we facilitate the needs of our seniors moving forward, to make sure that they're healthy. <clears throat> okay, so um, Denise, there's a question in the chat. And then right. Tim had his hand raised. Right. Um, I'll, I'll address the two of those, but I, I just want to continue on um, with Lynn is asking. And Lynn, thank you, because these are exactly the questions that we want to hear from from the community. And this, you know, we are in preliminary stages, but um, and, and also to talk about the kitchen. Uh, Andrew Liebson and I first went over to Hadley to check out their senior center. Then Lily and I went over, and it's it's pretty amazing. And what they did before they started their senior senior center, which is sort of a set senior slash community center, they went around to ten different senior centers. So we do have information on that. So, you know, again, this is preliminary, but um, you know, we're working on all of those all of those things. The second is, I think, in the chat. There's a question about the church. And just to let you know that um, we've had, we had an initial meeting with the UMass Clean Energy Corp and they came over and met with MA and I just a couple days ago. And we went through the church and they said they actually thought it was in better shape than they had initially anticipated. And um, they said, it's just such a great space. So I think, you know, it's once again, it's very preliminary. Um, there are a few ideas, but we certainly welcome any other ideas for that space. So that's also under, under consideration. Now I'll just move that on to Tim for your question. Um, Lynn, I just, Tim Hilche here from the Community Preservation Committee. I just wanted to second what John was saying there. Um, there's a, about $1.3 million mm -hmm. in undesignated funds available at the moment. Um, we've recently allocated $2 million to the park project. And um, we're gonna have some uh, other committees who are approaching CPC for funds for the town common and for the architectural studies for the uh, grammar school building. And um, as, as John mentioned, there's a possibility to, um, and senior housing uh, is also gonna come to us for a feasibility study because it makes sense with a senior community center to be closely located with affordable senior housing and that the seniors living in that housing can walk to the services that they need to, to access. So um, there's gonna be a lot of demand on the CPC, but there's this possibility of using it to leverage, uh, to borrow money against the revenue that we'd receive in the future. So Julie Cavaco also had her hand up and then there's another question in the chat. Okay, okay thank you. Um, I have to tell you, I'm also interested in having a kitchen that's feasible for community events. Um, I don't know if anyone is here from the library to speak on it. We had talked about it back um, when I was working at the library with Sarah about putting in um, a full working kitchen, um, but it got sort of shot down in the preliminary. So um, I would love to see that because um, 
I've, you know, done community dinners at churches over the years. And churches closed, I've lost that ability to do that. Um, but it's it's a really good community building effort that's you know, meals. But so I would like to really encourage us to um, invest in a space that we can use. I think potentially overlapping with the senior center. If the senior center gets really um, well used, that kitchen isn't going to be available um, for other people to use. Um, so that's something to consider down the line to make sure that we've got a kitchen um, that we can use. And the other thing is, isn't most of the com community um, ah, preservation? No, nope, the oh. he's helping me. <laughs> um, the uh, Meals on Wheels are cooked in another location and delivered out. So we really don't do much work in the senior center kitchen. So the space used in the kitchen um, is gonna be something that I'd like to see um, worked out also. Thank you. Julie, just to, you know, before Jennifer, um, Julie, just to let you know that when we did go over to Hadley, the design of the building was, was I mean, they put so much thought into that building. And what was really interesting about that is is that you can close off the rest of the building and just have the, um, the the room open. It's like a big dining area in the kitchen. So it could be closed for different events because that's where the uh, community, the community, uh, they hold different meetings in there and different events. So that would that's something that we would definitely consider. Right, and we just would need to make sure that it gets mapped out in such a way that the senior center uh, doesn't get proprietary that they're um they have a total separate storage just total yes. separate yeah. um because yeah. that would be one of the things that i could see yeah. uh, mixing it up right. later on Thank right you. and once again you know that it, it's so well thought out over there we've got a lot of information but but those are really good comments thank you all right um, i think to jennifer so, well denise um before jennifer there are a couple of people in the chat um, oh, okay. sorry they were there it's nope. trying to balance the two of them thank you um so uh, Daniel Nietzsche asked, will use of the community space be limited by income level for a period of time due to potential funding sources? Valid question, Dan. I'm not sure the answer to that until we meet with our legislative delegation. Our current um, meeting has not been finalized yet. Once it does get finalized, our legislative delegation is supposed to meet with the select board um, personally. And hopefully in the near future, we're looking to identify the funding stream for all these projects. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting meeting. They've been extremely supportive. But now we've got to go back to the drawing board and say, OK, what are the funding mechanisms? Where can we pull money from for each one of these projects and ultimately work out a priority in making sure they're affordable for our residents? Because we know we, we don't want the tax rate to jump. So, yep. yeah, I, there's there's many different things. There you are. <laughs> I know that guy. Usually I see my first Reese. Hey, John. <laughs> I actually brought the question up because in my work, we've I've seen this type of activity before using the community development block grants. Mm -hmm. And because those are tailored towards people of low and moderate income, when you do a senior center slash community center, it actually limits the use, the population that can use it for, I believe it is five years, and then it's open to the to the general public. So I didn't know if that was a funding source that Deerfield was looking at or, or not because of those constraints. I'm glad you notified of, the, of that up to us before we met with our legislative delegation because that may impact our decision where we go for funding sources. Yeah, so it's five years? I believe it's five years. I'd, it's been a couple of years since we've undertaken a project like that, but I, that's my recollection from past projects. All great information, thank you. No, that opens our eyes to the block grant. So we'll keep a watch for that. And if it impacts just, us negatively, we've got to take that into account. Yeah, and, and just to add on to that, they may have changed some regulations. Maybe it was a certain percentage of the people who use it have to be LMI, low modern income. Mm -hmm. um, have to go back and review the regulations or you know, your legislators could, could potentially look into that as well. Or you know, certainly um, MJ from Franklin County probably may know that as well. Absolutely, thank you, yeah. Yep. Okay, so before Jennifer, um, Deborah Yaf Yaffe, Yaffe asks two questions. <coughs> Excuse me. Will there be other meetings where the public can weigh in and give their input? These are such large projects. What is the timeline on these projects, Denise? Okay. 
Well, well, first of all, yes. I mean, we hold our meetings are open to, and we all all read, you know, ask for public comment for every meeting. And um, you know, this is something that is going to, it's not going to happen in in a year or two. It's going to happen over a period of time. You know, we don't know the exact timeline yet, but also as we've we've talked and you know, Carolyn has said, you know, we have we have to be able to pivot. We have to be able to um, pivot depending upon where funding comes. You know how so and you know hopefully we'll find out a little bit more of that as we go along and we have a I think a meeting in two weeks but I think Carolyn has her hand up and she can answer. I, I just want to say uh, it's 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 in a period of five years and how we which which project goes forward um, obviously the park is moving forward the Leary lot will be moving forward because our select board is I mean we haven't formally voted but um, there is consensus to use um, our first. ARPA money towards the Leary lot. Um, and I think we are interested in going forward with the town hall. So that would get a slug of money from our second ARPA money, maybe. So it depends. Um, those, this is a three town senior center. Um, you know, our seniors um, are from three towns. So we have a little bit of an advantage. And um, we, the first program that we probably would apply for is the million dollar municipal project um, that Natalie Blaze new bill um, covers. But, you know, who knows, you know, like Denise said, we have the March 2nd follow up meeting and then um, we need to reach out and see who else is going to provide funding. But the feasibility study for the senior housing means that we can go out to um, you know, developers and, and, and market it. And it will be a friendly 40B. It will be, a, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, assisted living. I mean, it will be senior housing that is um, subsidized. So, you know, that, that will have um, funding, outside source funding. And that will, that's probably a three to five year project just because of the process. If I could address mm -hmm. that, um, yeah. the senior housing and the funding, um, because we've been, just to update everybody, uh, we've been speaking with um, RDI and Franklin Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, and they're the folks that put together the Sanderson Place project in Sunderland. And a couple of really cool things that we found out is that um, the CPC money that we voted at town meeting may um, last summer, I guess it was, may very well be all that the town has to put in. And that they are also, once they open, they are subsidized senior housing, but they pay taxes. They don't operate as a nonprofit. So that they will actually be bringing um, tax revenues into the town, which is really cool. So. Anyway, I just wanted to, to add that. And so I think in a way, senior housing, um, while part of this vision, um, will can move forward uh, with a minimal impact to the town finances. And um, we are going to try to be very creative and get the geothermal uh, plant for the campus under the umbrella of senior housing. If we can pull that off, that would be super cool because those organizations are really interested in, in efficiencies like that. And now Jennifer Remillard has been waiting patiently. Okay. Jennifer? Thank you. My, my response is into Julie's comment, which was a few comments ago. So um, as the uh, new senior center director, I've already been in touch with um, John Pachoric and those who are in process for um, looking at what the needs are with the senior center and facility. So I like hearing the comment about the kitchen area. Um, I Over in the congregational church, the kitchen's still there. So I don't know if that could be a potential alternative location as things are going on for what you're looking for, Julie. Um, and I think it's important to note that you know moving into this plan it's really being considered all of the storage all of the needs um, especially the current um, survey from UMass is out there for the seniors needs assessment currently going on so if you haven't completed that and you are age 50 and older go to the town website and give your feedback that's open online through the end of the month um, 
to hear the feedback from the seniors and those who would be utilizing those purposes for um, building and all of the items that in there for, for the various services. Um, it's really important to hear what you need and want um, to see, especially if we're going to invest all the time and money and energy into creating this dual purpose uh, facility. And I think it's, um, you know, that's why we're holding the session. And as Denise mentioned, it's gonna take a few years to get this completed. It's not gonna be done overnight. So thank you. Yes, thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not going to happen overnight. And I think what's, what's um, exciting, too, is that, well, I don't know if it's ex exciting or not, but Charlie Baker said, you know, we um, attended a conference, a Zoom conference, and he said, we have a lot of money, and he wants to spend it before the end of his term. So that's in a year's time. So we are out there trying to uncover every single rock that we can, you know, to look for grant funding. But you know, along with looking for grant funding comes who's going to write the grant, who's going to manage the grant. So there's a lot involved. But I think what's really exciting about this is that, you know, we've come together with all the committees in town and everyone is actually talking to each other. So, you know, hopefully we're lifting a little bit of the burden from the select board, from the administration, which because we've got bare bones administration in town hall. So we're really all trying to work together to make this work. And we welcome everybody's participation and comments and questions because that's what's really gonna help us move forward. So next question. Um, Denise, uh, Julie has, have we addressed, now I don't know if this is an intentional spelling of the oldie churchy kitchen, but no, the, just kidding. <laughs> Thought I get a laugh out of you. <laughs> have, have, we, have we addressed the old? church kitchen. I'm, I'm assuming that's the congregation. The old church kitchen? No, I mean, you know, that's that's still pretty early on in the plan. I mean, I, I don't know. And I don't know whether there would continue to be a kitchen there if there's a kitchen in the community slash senior center. Maybe there it would be, but not as, as big or possibly, you know, I mean, we really have to have a brainstorming session. It could be that the church turns into a performance center and a place that people could rent and have different events. I mean, th there are lots of possibilities for that because it is a really wonderful space. I, I, I think Dave, Dave could okay. give us a little overview of um, what is going to be done in the church right now. It's for the temporary senior center. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dave. Yep, uh, part of the MOU that we're working with Deerfield Academy okay. on the uh, renovations there is to, uh, get that kitchen to a functioning kitchen so that uh, it can be used for the senior center or community center. Um, Dave, you know. can you explain what an MOU is and what the, um, the process is with Deerfield Academy? Because I think there are a lot of people here who don't know what, what you're doing there, the work that you've been doing there. Uh, MOU is a memorandum of understanding and it's between the town and in this case, Deerfield Academy, of what work they will be doing at the uh, Congregational Church. Uh, the part that is to basically renovate the um, part of the church, not, not the uh, church itself, but the, uh, having a brain cramp, the, the main uh, hall area, yeah. the main hall. Uh, and there is a stage in that area um, it's putting in handicapped bathrooms. It's also renovating the kitchen and then renovating the uh, the office area for uh, uh, use for um, Jennifer and uh, you know we're, Jennifer and I are still having conversations about exactly how that's going to be put together. But uh, it's all to make this a very functional area, and we're anticipating that you're going to. We're probably going to be using this space for at least two to three years so we're making it so it is all usable and as it was noted earlier that church is actually in a lot better shape than people think it is it's a uh, very structurally sound there's a lot of chested beams in there that are stronger than iron in some cases so um, we're looking forward to this and uh, Actually, uh, we're hoping that because Deerfield Academy has the MOU, we should be getting that back from them shortly. As soon as we get that back, I can sign it and they can start working. 
Yep, there's a new handicap accessible ramp on the back side that's pretty long that's allows for handicap accessibility with a wheelchair. So uh, what else? We're installing, I think, up to six mini split units that are yes. energy efficient for heat and cooling. Yep, there's all kinds of good work going to be done in there. Right. And Dave, just to add to that, when, um, when Ben and his students came over from UMass, he said that it's a perfect candidate for blow in uh, cell cellulose insulation. He said the tower, you know, needs to be either straightened or just shored up. And then I think there was one, maybe big support beam that has to have, I don't know, I'm not a contractor, but some kind of metal support put in just to stabilize that so the building doesn't sway. Um, and then I think just in the basement, there's definitely some water issue. So, and of course there's knob and tube and, you know, all of that, but, yeah. but the, aside, um, aside from that. The, uh, the work that we're talking about is not going to be in the main church building right, right. now. Um, you know, here again, I have a pipe dream of actually putting eight senior housing units within the side, that church building, which would require the stabilization of the steeple and everything else. Yep. So, but those are just a pipe dream that I have. And, um, and we haven't really laid out any plans on that. So to currently use it, we can't use blown in uh, insulation because the electrical inspector flagged it as a possible fire hazard with the knob and tube wiring. Yeah, so the cool. only way we can do yeah, the blown in is to basically rewire the whole building, which turns into a disaster. So we <laughs> want to try and avoid that for the time being until we figure out what we want to permanently use it for. Right. Yep. Good point, John. Thank you. So um, I missed Lynn Rose made. This is more of a point than a question, but then there's some questions. But she made the point also thinking about whether the space will be able to be well design the space for use for educational entertainment activities such as wiring for sound systems and presentation equipment and a stage etc and um if i could answer that one um the hadley senior center is all done that way and one of the interesting things was um that's worth noting that sort of inspired some of this was we said you have amazing attendance here how you know how did you do that and they said well we have people come here to vote. And then when they see this place, they go, oh, I could come and hang out here. So we thought that was really cool. And again, it reinforces the concept. You know, older adults are part of the community. And yes, it's nice to have some separate space for, you know, quiet, quieter entertainments and stuff. But that um, a community needs a, a vital senior center and a senior center needs to be a vital part of the community, right? So um, other, let's see, oh, somebody talked about upgrading the plumbing and the electrical and um, John addressed that. Um, Daniel Nietzsche Just said- For a point of interest, the, uh, the church before that, uh, a few years ago, they actually up, did upgrade a lot of the electricity in the, in the building. So the part that we're renovating actually has a lot of new wiring already. It's not knob and tube. It's the older building, but the main church that has the knob and tube. Okay. Um, in the chat again, um, Daniel Nietzsche, and I hope I'm pronouncing names correctly, says if the building on in, is in the historical register, there may be restrictions regarding what type of windows could be installed. So the exterior facade continues to maintain its historical appearance. Julie Chalfont replied, the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation of Historical Structures allows for energy efficiency upgrades. And Tim Hilchey says that he can also respond to that. And that's why his hand is up, I think. Yes. Um, yeah, the, uh, the CPC funds would be a major component for the, the first part of the renovation of the grammar school slash former senior center. And one of the things that will be probably included in the request that'll come from Dave Wolfram or the select board in general is a requirement that when we do this first phase of architectural design and study that um, a person whose uh, main job is to ensure that the architects are aware of compliance with all of the regulations reg reg regarding historical um, construction projects like this. And as Julie, rightly points out, this would be an adaptive reuse of a historic structure. So a lot of things could change, but the idea is to preserve the integrity and the look of the building, um, but also realize the needs of the community. 
And yeah. MA has her hand up too. Is MA, is it on this topic? Because Dave wanted to add something. Yes, it is. Uh, I was just going to say that in relation to any energy efficiency kinds of things that can be done in these spaces, the Energy Committee can apply for green communities funding for, for this. And again, it's another great source of, of money for doing that kind of thing. I mean, just to add on to that, um, I was on another webinar and there is under the mass development grants, there are cultural facilities grants. And that could be for municipalities, um, either 50,000 square feet or at least 125 years old. And I think that church is 125 years old as, the, as is the school. So, you know, there, there is funding out there. It's just really researching and looking for. Okay. Uh, just for a point of interest, I don't believe either of the buildings are registered in the Historical Society currently. Um, that is correct. The only building that is um, in registered historically is um, the tobacco barn, Decker's tobacco barn in South Deerfield. Um, from the historic commission meeting that we had um, on Monday night, it was noted that there was a letter um, referencing the historical value from 2014 of the grammar school, which is how we can um, go towards the CPC funding. Um, that was a point of our discussion during our meeting on Monday um, was part of this process in that you, in referencing that letter because it's been there, um, it can, can move some things forward with along those lines. Thanks, Jennifer. Hey, Carolyn, um, do you know what the process is to register and is there an advantage to register those two buildings? To the um, well, we wouldn't really want to register them because we're going to, we know we're going to renovate them. So okay. it doesn't make sense. It um, actually handicaps us. Yeah. Um, the reason, the reason why, I mean, there is no historic um, district or anything like that, even up in old Deerfield, because mm -hmm. you have to have um, owner's um, agreement and Deerfield Academy didn't want to do that. They didn't want to be handicapped with that. So even in historic Deerfield, there's no historic uh, okay. district. Thanks. I think Julie has her it hand is. up. Yep. Just quickly for the CPC funding to be used, um, one of the categories is that Tim's probably better to address this than I am. One of the categories is historical something or other. And um, there's two ways to do it. One is to have it registered in like the state or whatever, but you can also do it just by having the town's historical commission recognize the um, yep. building as historically important to the town, which the historic um, committee has already done for this old grammar school building that we're talking about. Yeah. And they did that for the Tilton Library as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the letter from 2014 that I was referencing, Julie. Yeah. Um, I'm on the historic committee. Um, the other piece to that, um, just so you know what's in process with the historic commission, we are in process of trying to get a national historic area along North Main, which has been the process for the past couple of years with the walking tour, getting all the form B's completed to submit that to the, um, to the state um, and, and get that national historic um, district recognized. So I just want to make um, everyone aware that that is something that we're working on. Um, and that would include that whole area from Bloody Brook <laughs> Monument down to North Main Street. Well, so we might want to wait on that. <laughs> well, my, no. well, my thought is if that was not, you know, it wasn't mentioned before. And while um, I am one person on the committee, you know, and, and do the CCI for that rep, um, I think it's important to have a conversation with John Nove and the entire historic um, commission to get their input um, I'm only one member, everyone else really um, has some strong feedback because this has been a project um, that we've, that's been in process even before I became a member a couple years ago. So that's um, just something I wanna bring to your attention, everyone's attention. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, that may be, a, that may be another conversation <laughs> with the group for another time, but thank you. Tim, Tim has his hand up. Tim? 
Just wanted to follow up on Julie Chalfant's um, comment. I, I agree that uh, I think the church is is much older. It's it's moved from one site to another site in town, and it's much older probably than the than the old former grammar school. But having historic letters from the historical commission probably would be the best give us the best opportunity to use CPC funds for funding projects in those two buildings. Yeah, Denise, <coughs> there's a, there's a uh, Greg Franceschi has a comment or a question in the chat. Was the church considered as a possible permanent location for the senior center slash community center with the elevator and addition connecting it to the future town hall? As I recall, we did discuss yeah. a variety of different um, connections. I, I if you remember, we were talking about traffic flow, and although we don't have a landscape architect plan um, for, and we don't have any really concrete um, plans for the geothermal, except that it's going to be sort of where we're thinking of senior housing, you had to have maintain that drive through between the buildings. Um, at this point, everything is up in the air, uh, but we had not um, we decided not to connect towards the church because of the possibility. I mean, we needed, we needed access. You still need access to your campus. Right. And frankly, I don't think that that space would be large enough for a senior community center because, I, you know, Lily, when we went over to Hadley Senior slash Community Center, it was, it was large, but it, Again, I'm not sure whether that was large enough for what we're looking for. Because, you know, Hadley is a town of, I think, 5,000 people. Deerfield's 5,000. But if the senior center is going to be for three different towns, we may have to increase the size of that. So I don't think that, you know, just at first glance, I don't think the church would be would be able to serve that purpose. Denise, can I jump in for one sec? Yes, please. Um, Lily, can you allow me to share screen for one sec? Or Denise? Yeah. Uh, sure. So in order to use community preservation. I did it, Denise. It's thank okay. you. Yeah, so in order to use community preservation funds, your building has to be registered with the Massachusetts Historical Commission as a building of significance. Here you see on your screen where that building is registered. Here's the registration number. It already meets the criteria should the Community Preservation Committee decide to fund any part of it. You see a picture of it on the right side of your screen. So nothing further needs to be done with that. All the printouts are in my office to give to the Community Preservation Committee. Thank you, John. Yeah, thanks, John. We're already halfway there. <laughs> You gotta do your research. What funds are available? If you gotta jump through too many hoops, you may have to find a different direction. I know, John. John is always on top of things. Let me tell you. Oh boy. And there's several favorite. buildings on it in town. There's uh, there's basically all of Old Main Street, and there's several other areas. Yeah, I know the Tilton Library is already too. Okay. Good. Do we have any other questions? Any other comments? Uh, not that I see in the chat. If anybody else is in, I mean, you can all look in the chat and catch anything that's missing, but, and I do not see any raised hands. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I just, I just oh, encourage. Lynn Rose, oh. oh, Lynn Rose says, thank you for all the hard work. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> thanks, Lynn. No, thanks for your comments. Yes. Um, yeah, I just encourage all of you to continue to, you know, we have our meetings, we have them posted, so everyone is welcome. In the meantime, I think, you know, you ne probably know some of the community members you know, on CCI, you know, you can always get in touch with individual members to ask them and they can bring that question or comment to our next meeting. So. Senior if, housing meets every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we welcome tonight. anybody at seven o'clock. All comments are welcome. And if you care to join, let us know and we'll we'll send your name to the select board. Just yeah, say Lily runs a wicked efficient meeting, so <laughs> it does. It's it's one hour too. long. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a one hour commitment. Um, and you do the minutes right there. So it's pretty good. Um, I just want to say to everybody not to panic um, about any one aspect of this because it's pretty flexible and it depends on our funding. Um, so the idea is to have as concrete um, ideas as possible and then be able to be flexible. So um, we are really seriously trying to leverage money. We have money in the CPC, but we are going after um, serious money. And um, so just hang on everybody. It's gonna be kind of crazy, but we're gonna get some funding right? and we're gonna move. And, and just to remind people that, you know, most of us here, I don't know all of us, but most of us here, we're all taxpayers too. So we are just as concerned as everybody is about raising taxes. So believe me, we are keeping that in mind. <laughs> None of us want our taxes raised. Right. So, you know, I think if there's no other business, no other questions, I think we'll, end, but before I end the meeting, I think we'd like to schedule our next meeting, which we haven't done. And Carolyn, does it make sense to do it after March 2nd? Um, sure. yes. Okay. Um, I think, um, Is that a planning board meeting that night. Um, uh, we have a, okay. So there's a planning board meeting on the seventh. The finance meeting is on the eighth. Um, we, we have a select board meeting on the ninth. Um, what about March 2nd? Well, yeah, we could meet March 2nd, I guess. I don't, I don't think anybody has a meeting that night. I have to double check something. I might not be able to attend. I might have to do a finance committee okay. meeting in one of the other two towns. Okay. And it, it is Ash Wednesday too, I think. Some people may have trouble. I won't be able to make the second, but you all- I think we have a meeting that. on the second, Trevor. Well, we have a meeting on the second. That. I think so. I will well, be able to. What about, what about if senior housing gives up its Thursday the 10th? because we love you all so much. We would give up our... <laughs> okay, let's let's do that then. That's fine. Okay. That works over my schedule. Thanks, Lily. We'll talk so, Thursday how, how about, are we doing six or 6.30? Uh, 6.30 is a little better for me just because then I can get home and eat before we Okay, go. yeah, for people right. you know, have to make dinner for... Okay. Them. Then okay. we'll do 6.30 on March 10th, okay? That sounds great. Good. Okay, so um, uh, Ruth, Ruth Tom Pullen asks, is there a way to find out about these meetings with Zoom ID and passcode in advance of the meetings? And yes, they're always posted on the town website on the calendar. And when you click on them, they usually they have the hot links that have the Zoom IDs and all that stuff. Um, they also, don't always have the hot link, but the majority of time they do. And, and if they don't, they get fixed because otherwise I can't get on. So <laughs> <laughs> I complain to Denise and, and Jen. So it does get usually fixed. Right. And I will also be happy to tell you all that the meeting link for this meeting is always the same. Right. So if right. you have this one, you can come to this meeting anytime, as long as you know what the right time is. And Lily, on occasion, it has not been on the calendar, okay? But it's always, I always do it, so it's a joint select board CCI meeting. So right. for some reason, yeah, I'm, it should be on the calendar, but I think on occasion it has not made it to. You can always call town hall. It is always posted as a select board meeting, so it could, okay. you should be able to click on it as a select board meeting too, okay. because it has because, to be posted for us. Because we and don't have a, we don't have a space for CCI on the on the. On the if website. it's not visible, you just uh, view uh, other underneath the scheduled meetings, and it'll bring you to the calendar, and you can click on the calendar. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right, David. Trevor, Trevor has his hand up. I just wanted to say uh, thanks for everybody coming together. We've got a lot of really exciting projects going on. Um, you know, we, we zeroed in on kind of one section of this tonight and we have, you know, we have the ball fields at the other end of town, town park. We've got um, the town common and Leary Lod and, you know, right. this campus here, senior housing. There's just a lot of different items coming together and we all try to kind of figure out how we can pull the funding together to do it. I think it's exciting. We're all getting together and 
you know, we start in one spot, things will be contagious. They will move on to other things and we'll see that we're moving forward. So thanks for everybody's input and um, all the hard work. Contagious is such a great word. Yes, <laughs> it's a happy. Well, I, I don't years. know about the word contagious. I don't, I'm not really liking that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too years. Too many COVID meetings. I don't know. But my teamwork, <laughs> yeah, teamwork. <laughs> yeah, contagious is, yeah. But yeah. The one rate, thing that we missed in this meeting is the reason what? that we started all this. And to that's talk to each really other? Huh? To talk to each other? We no, no, did no. it to eliminate no, we, this. We science. really started this because we were seeing a massive one-time influx of money yeah. coming out of the federal government that we as the town were trying to capitalize on. Right. So we kept our tax rate reasonable while accomplishing all these massive missions in the residents' best interest. Yeah. So that's why we want to get with our legislative delegation. That's where this whole thing in the movement came from, to keep the tax rate as low as possible but try and work all these projects as much as we can by the time they want to expend the funds. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely a generational opportunity. And I don't, and, and this money is like one shot money. So we have to be able to, we have to line up. We have all these shovel ready kind of projects ready to go, sewer treatment plants, parks, all kinds of stuff. And we, we know that we're in the pipeline we can get into the pipeline. We just don't know what we're, the money is coming down through existing programs as much as we can say, tell. So then now we got to just hook up with the right existing programs. Um, and, and whether it's a 319 money for sure, whether it's going to be, um, you know, ARPA funding for sure, but, you know, some of these other funds are up in the air still, and, we're, and that's where we're trying to figure out. The Share Street seems to be getting a certain amount of funding, and that's going to be able to take care of, you know, some sidewalk issues. We want to get bike lanes, and we want to do all this kind of stuff, and, you know, hopefully Chapter 90 money will come along and be three or four times what we normally get, um, but we haven't heard yet, so that's why it's really confusing. Um, I don't think the governor has committed yet to, I mean, Trevor, you haven't heard anything or Dave, right? No, okay. See, we haven't heard what he's committing to chapter 90. We just know it's going to be more. We normally get three or 400,000 that we put towards our pavement management plan, which is totally inadequate now because of climate change with all these 60 degree days and then zero single digit days the next day, everything is buckling and cracking. So, you know, we're really clamoring for more money for our pavement management plan, but this one slug of money might be enough to do all our sidewalks. So we, we got to figure out what's happening and where the money's coming from and how we're going to allocate it. His so initial very, budget appropriation was 200 million. Legislature normally amends it up to 300 million. And he submitted to his budget this year at 300 to start. We want to advocate with our legislative delegation to get that over to 500 or 600 million to double it. Yep, that's where we're starting from. So there's so many balls in the air and nobody, I mean, every time you turn around, they are saying money here, money there. And it's like, okay, where? And so yeah, we're just getting see our, it. Right. And so what we're doing is trying to get our projects lined up ready to go whenever we can figure out what slot they're going to fit into. So right. that's why it seems a little bit just, you know, not as organized or as solid, but the idea is to be flexible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely to be flexible, but also, you know, we're trying to be by, by bringing everyone together in this uh, committee, we're trying to be more efficient and more effective with the money that we will get and and to prioritize but at the same time be flexible as to when when and where the money is coming in so it is a balancing act and all of us have ears peeled eyes peeled ears peeled to the, whatever <laughs> we hear we're sharing so that's what's really amazing too because there's a lot more people doing research it's not just a couple of us it's all of us are pounding the the computer and talking to people and stuff and that makes a big yeah. difference Lily? Oh, I, I just want to say the, um, to folks who, 
who are still here. We've lost a lot of people, but um, the Community Preservation Committee is meeting and a number of these initiatives are going there to, for funding, like the Town Common, the um, church, the, the grammar school, senior housing. And so attending the CPC meetings, you should be able to learn more in depth because there will be more specific presentations on each of those things as we advocate for the monies to achieve these. So uh, I just pitch. So Tim, when's our you. meeting? So um, we're gonna probably hear uh, the discussions about the first final applications, March 10th. And I believe we're meeting at 6.30, but um, it will oh, be no. posted. That's no. a at our C C C C I C I meeting. Our meeting. <laughs> you guys, you guys. <laughs> you gotta pay no, I, I, this is part of the CCI, uh, CC, the CPC application specifies that our first real meeting is March 10th. Okay, well then so, we really have to reschedule, guys. Well, what time right. is your meeting, Tim? I believe it's at six thirty, but let me just verify. Um, oh, so can... wait, wait a minute. Yeah, because we just yeah we just. Are like... you not listening when we just did that? <laughs> that was that was the one part I heard meeting. I heard time. I didn't hear date. <laughs> okay. And uh, oh, I apologize for that. I didn't have CPC on my calendar either. Which Tim, we don't yeah, want to. we have, have a we have a meeting next week committees. at CPC, but it's not for applications. It's for just some general business. But when is that meeting next week, Tim? Um, it's uh, on Thursday um, or Wednesday, the 23rd at 6.30, but it's, it's a half hour meeting. It's, it's really nothing to do with any of these projects. Yeah, It's, it's really some business that we need to take, take to deal with as a really? committee, but you're welcome to come and listen. Um, <laughs> really, how about, and can you give up the senior housing on um, March 3rd then instead of March 10th? I thought there was a problem with March 3rd. I can't do March 3rd. That's the night I have the Waitley Finance Committee presentation for Senior Earth Center. How about everybody else? We may not we may not get a night where absolutely everybody can attend. Yeah. You say March 3rd we're looking at? Yeah. Because yeah. the 10th is already um, CCPC. Uh, okay. I'm, do you want to do okay the March 3rd? Excuse me, Jim, Dave? I'm okay with the third. You're, you are okay. okay. And Kate's okay with the third. Yeah, you, was that a thumbs up, Kate? Yeah, we usually have first and third Thursdays, but if we're meet, we're meeting on the twenty eighth, so that's probably too soon. So the third should work. And okay. Annalie, you said yes. I thought I saw. I think okay, that yeah. is. Can I send we'll someone? Go. Can I send someone in my stead for the um for the historic commission? Sure. Usually, that's like the areas I think that really needs to be. Sure. Yeah, that's the a meeting. great idea. That's a good, yeah. As long as you, that's right. a good idea that we can send designees. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Thanks. So senior housing's giving up the third. Um, Thanks, Lily. Yeah, and we're Thanks, probably gonna have Lily. to cancel the tenth, you guys, because I'm on the CPC, and that's gonna be a <laughs> boatload of applications. And and senior housing's got an application that'll be. <laughs> oh, Lily, welcome. Welcome everybody to my and no senior housing either on the tenth. Okay. No senior housing. Oh, on the tenth. Well, okay. senior housing will be at the CPC. So if you can instead come to the CPC meeting um, to speak with about senior housing, that would be awesome. My okay, house. I'll put that on my calendar then. Yes. Yeah, right. so is, every, is everybody thoroughly confused now? All right. So six thirty okay. on the third is CCI. On the third. Do yep. I hear? Do I hear a motion from anyone to adjourn? A motion for the select board to adjourn. Yeah. Oh, the select board first, yeah. Yep. I motion for CCI to adjourn. Yeah. I, um, Quick, I'm somebody a, give I'm a, a second. Sec I second, but oh, you some. Carolyn's <laughs> seconding. Yeah. So, all those in favor, yeah, like Kevin everyone, Nathaniel. All in favor. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Hi, Dave. Hi. Hey, thanks right. everybody so much for attending. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Great job. Great yeah, job. Great job. Yeah, it was great. Denise, you're beautiful. Good time, Carolyn. <laughs> All right.